and welcome to my quick little tutorial on uh, Pulsar the Lost Colony. Um, it's a game in early access. There's not a lot of documentation about the different features and different things you can do in the game. So I'm going to make this little video here to show you some of the things that drove me nuts trying to figure out. And uh, hopefully this will save you a little bit of hair. So one of the very first things I'm going to show you is actually in the engineering bay. There's different locations for engineering depending on which ship you are. This is the the first one you come across. It's the one on the left. Uh, the first time I actually saw this panel, I was like, oh, what's this do? And I hit a switch. Turned the whole ship off. Didn't even know what I was doing. And if you look on the right side here, there's a panel that says, you know, pull lever one. So I pulled lever one. I have to boot the ship OS. I boot the OS. And pull lever two. I have to prime the warp core. And then enable shields. And at this point I thought, oh, okay, we're all done. That's not true. If you look at all these uh, screens, they all say no signal. No signal anywhere. So, and this is the part it took me like an hour to figure out. Um, the science lab and the bridge, both at the science station, will have one uh, window open. It says crew control. You have to push this button. And I'm going to show you the one on the bridge, too. Push this button. There, it turns everything back on. That last button is not documented anywhere that I could find. I actually ran to it by accident. Um, everything else is pretty easy to find. So that last step is just it, the documentation says, and then turn everything on, and you're fine. It doesn't really help much. Um, another thing with the three switches, oh, and the reason why you might do that is because, uh, let's say you get a whole bunch of viruses from an enemy ship, um, one of the fastest ways of fixing it is just power down, restart. And especially if you have your whole crew here, one person can be flipping switches and then the science person can just, you know, hit their button and turn everything back on real quick. Um, these three switches are also useful for when you're at a repair station and you need to repair, you cannot repair with your shields up. The only way to turn the shields off is to flip this last switch. That's it. Turn the shields off, shields on. You don't have to go push the button again to uh, restart everything because it's just the shield, it's not the ship OS. Done. All right, that's those things. To show you um, some science things, first things first. And this is for every monitor again that you come across. You can sit here and you can turn and like push the buttons and click on things like this, but it's kind of a little weird when you're trying to go through three screens and you're moving your whole perspective like this. What you're going to do if you if you know you're going to be somewhere where there's just you can do a lot of screen work, you can click and hold your space bar and that unlocks your mouse from your character movement which means you're allowed you can just go here and click on things and you don't have to you know give yourself motion sickness trying to figure out what's going on um, that's a quick little tip there on that uh, with science stuff they can send programs to the ships or they can also boost their own ships like these little floppy drive icons are for attack stuff these squares are for boosts or buffs uh, these little dots are how much charge that program has. Uh, not every not every program has the same amount of charge, and when you go into warp, your ship automatically charges the program. I think it gives, it depends on the warp core, but I think at start you usually get three dots per warp. Uh, so obviously this one's a very powerful one. It, uh, it has five dots, and then you get your shield boosting, which only uses two dots. But if you use these programs, and you, but you know, you're know you not warping somewhere, you're still in a fight, and you need to recharge them, uh, there's a way to do that. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Uh, so first thing you want to do is make sure you select the one you need, you want to charge first, because that's the first one that's going to get charged. Then, go back to engineering. Every engineering section will have a uh, one of these panels here, and it says fuel kit. Uh, fuel capsule is 20. So you load a fuel, and then you have this this thing here, manual program charging station. This is the fuel capsule. Make sure that's there. Hit the switch. Whoever designed that engineering does not believe in lights. And there you can see it's given us three charge pips. And then I can go do, if I did two more, I could fully recharge all my programs. But it's 
you know, uses a lot of fuel. And there's no limit on how much fuel you can carry, at least not that I've found. So it and it's super cheap. It it pays. You shouldn't be flying around with 20 fuel. You should you know, go buy like 200. There's no reason not to. Uh, see, that's that's the science. Now, uh, one of the last things to show you is how to actually go somewhere. The first time I started playing, I was like, okay, well, let's see here. I'm gonna let's see. Let's say I want to go to Churd Sess. I was like, all right. I looked at the map, which is tab, star map. All these little dots are sectors. I was like, okay, Churd Sess. Well, let's go. Let's go to Churd Sess. And I started flying. It was taking a really long time, and I didn't seem to be getting any closer. And that's when I realized that there's actually a warp functionality. Um, just trying to do this is not going to get you anywhere near there. So the way to go somewhere in warp is hit tab, and the only, only the captain can do this part. Tab, star map, and then you can uh, right click on your destination. This circle here is your jump range of the ship, the way the ship is currently infected. Getting new um, uh, warp cores and stuff like that can increase or decrease the jump range. Something that I'm seeing a lot of captains in uh, multiplayer not doing and it just seems so backwards to me is um, you don't have to go you don't have to do your own jump like you don't have to go okay I want to go here to 1738 um, I have to go okay find 6168 and then jump there and then go 814 and jump there no all you gotta do is very simple right click on your destination boom it automatically plots it for you um, when you want to go so like if you want to go there but no oh, no I changed my mind I want to go here you it sets waypoints, so you have to unclick the first one to set your new waypoint. Or if you want to do something like, I want to go here, and then I'm going to go here, and then I want to go over here, or whatnot. So basically, this just sets your waypoints for you. Once you've done that, there you go. One of the stars will have that uh, diamond pattern around it. That shows you your next destination. So in order to go somewhere, and personally, I like to do this part by changing my perspective, my camera. To this this is how I actually like to pilot a lot of ships because I can hit the buttons and I can look at uh, my little info panel there and you can you, know, you can see through the ship so it's not like it hides things uh, anyway to actually do the jump you, what you do want to do is the pilot points until the star turns blue like that and you can actually do this next first and then point the ship if you want is you don't have to do it this way you can you can initiate jump prep first um, if you don't care about a little bit of extra heat, you can just crank Science Lab all the way up, initiate, and it's going to fill up the calculations and then warp charge. This part takes a little bit. Now at this point, what the captain would do is like, you know, okay, align and jump. The engineer will take care of this part, then the pilot will say, okay, I'm aligned, and then the engineer will click jump to SE 1680. There you go, now you're in jump. Uh, which, which you'll see here in just a few seconds, and the captain again is the only person that can do this part, is they can actually skip the warp. Once you see it says skip up there, or it says F8, skip warp down here, you can just hit F8, and you skipped the warp sequence. And now we are at sector 16, or 168. So that's it, just really helpful hints and tricks I picked up while trying to figure out how to play this game. I hope this was helpful. Have a good one.